I'm very happy with the way that this has dried and um, giving me a beautiful smooth sky. Now it's time to move on to the distant headland and the greens I'm going to use for that um, are going to be largely ultramarine blue with Indian yellow. But I'm seeing a rather warm colour. You've got some fields up there which are um, quite golden. So using whether it was the ultramar sorry, the um, raw sienna or the um, yellow ochre, I can mix up a more um, a duller green for the top over here. Now I'm just going to do this section down to the waterline. And I'll start with this. Actually, I think it could be more of just the golden colour on its own. There, I think that's more pleasant. And then I'm going to move over to green. So just bringing this down. Actually gone back into adding a little bit of that golden color in here and to this edge here I'm going to soften it slightly because there will be a tree over that now we're coming down to the forested area actually no here we come all the way down so let's just get that in Right. And then we're going to come in with a dark color because we have forest. So ultramarine blue and Indian yellow, but quite, quite strong. And you see, I'm using my brush um, more vertically. And I'm going to put out a little bit of quinacridone gold to get a really strong dark green and also for a bit of variety. So let's go quite vertical where it meets the wash above. Yes, every now and then having a little bit of this Quinacridone gold actually for working nicely there. Then let's come back to our nice strong dark green. Now this paint is quite thick. And I can barely see my the reason I'm coming up against this damp surface is just to have a little bit of blend. Um, now that means that I need to have this paint quite thick. Okay, which is going to give me intensity of colour. But not only that, it means that it won't flood up into the wash above. It's sitting where I put it. Now let's get there without wasting too much time. Coming in nice and dark behind these boat masts. So they're really going to show up well. I'm trying to keep my baseline reasonably straight. And not take too long either. In case I suddenly have drying washes causing stress. So my boats there, which need to have their masks showing up well. There we go.
And then I just want to indicate that on the hillsides we have some hedges. So this is still damp, but the paint on my brush isn't too watery. So just indicating in some of those hedges that would divide up the fields. And in fact, there's some trees just along the top. And again, if I can get that in before the top has dried, we'll have a little soft blend. And then every now and then we'd see a few more trees. And let's see now. I think we need another hedge there. looking quite realistic. Just a little way down behind the trees. I could put one in here but I can see that this has already dried and um, we don't want to have anything that's really like a line there. But I'm seeing some foliage across the water that's actually quite bronzy. So let's, oops, that was a bit Unmixed. Probably see a blue lump on my brush somewhere. And that's a little bit of foliage along the bottom there. Unfortunately, this has dried. Let's see if I can re wet it. And then we'll get a bit of foliage in along there. And up here. It's a little bit of scruffiness there, but it's actually going to work as a reflection, so that's not a cause for stress. Just making sure that we've got this nice and dark behind the masts. And then I think we're going to need to let this dry before starting on the water. Right, that needs to dry. Now it's time to move on to the water and it's just this section here. Now you might find it easier to pre-wet. And if you accidentally just touch this baseline, it's not a problem because it's going to be reflecting down in anyway. So let's wet all the way down to here. You could, of course, paint wet on dry. But you might spend too long trying to get that top line straight and then find that you have uneven drying. Now I'm going back to the same blue that I used earlier, but if it's a little bit more greenish than we used for the sky by not adding in the permanent rose, that's all to the good. Now I am going to put the board slightly on the tilt and let's start bringing in this beautiful blue wash. So this is Antwerp blue. There could still be a small amount of permanent rose on the palette, but unlikely really. Okay, so using horizontal brush strokes.
or slightly diagonal, but not up and down and not scouring either. Now I'm allowing the wash to lighten on the left here because I'm going to be growing a wintry tree over there. And I don't want to have to paint it over a very dark surface. Right, so I've got the basic wash in. Now we want to come in with some intense reflections. So going back to the green that I mixed earlier, ultramarine blue and Indian yellow or quinacridone gold. Now we're going to put in the dark part. Because all of this is going to be reflecting. We need to do this while everything is still nice and wet. So there we've got the reflection of the headlamp starting and then we bring it part of the way over. But certainly nice and dark underneath these boats so that they will show up well. a little bit unmixed. Now where we have boats here, I'm just going to darken slightly underneath them while it's done. And just keeping everything nice and flat and smooth. And I think that's enough there, but I just want to be sure I don't have hard line here, so I'm just teasing that out with a slightly damp brush. Okay, now there's going to be um, some bushes over the sea, over the water here, but I don't want to put them in yet. Um, I want this to dry off a little further, otherwise they're going to grow too big into this damp surface. 